fault tolerance protocols that uh, we have implemented in CHARM. So what we wanted to know was how do these uh, different protocols compare in terms of energy, uh, energy consumption? Um, well, the, the motivation for this work comes uh, from the exascale uh, projections and expectations. So there are many problems to reach exascale, but at least uh, energy and, and fault tolerance are two of them, and those are the two that we uh, addressed in this, in this paper. Uh, energy, um, because power, manage will, power management will be a, a big deal. Uh, this morning, uh, Professor Cameron mentioned the 20 megawatt uh, budget that uh, uh, the DOE has set for a, an exascale computer. But also, there are some uh, considerations for the managers of these centers, because even decently sized uh, uh, supercomputing installations can save up to a million year just by reducing one megawatt, one megawatt per uh, in, in the power. So th there's also you know a lot of opportunities to uh, co-design this this uh, uh, an eventual exascale system because uh, there there uh, there is a lot of help that needs uh, that the architectural uh, uh, people uh, need to to develop such a system. Now, fault tolerance is also uh, uh, really important at exascale because just the sheer size of the machine that will comprise more than 200,000 sockets, uh, it, it is estimated, will bring down the mean time between failure to uh, a value close to, to several minutes, uh, according to some estimations. And now the types of failures will also be uh, different, will be more complex, will involve uh, different uh, components of, of, the, of, the, of the system. And, uh, so there is some opportunity to try different stra strategies for, for fault tolerance. Uh, so with this in mind, our idea was to understand the interplay between energy and, and, and the different fault tolerance uh, strategies. Um, so um, let me give you an idea of the agenda that I have for today. I'll quickly review the three protocols that we evaluated in, in this study. I'm going to present the experimental setup that we used and some results. And then I will introduce an, an analytical model that uh, we, we uh, are developing to project uh, the results to exascale. And um, I will offer a couple of discussion points and, and I'll finish with some, some conclusions. All right, so um, here's the uh, list of protocols that we used. Um, Incidentally, those are the protocols that we have implemented in CHARM. So um, they are checkpoint restart, uh, flavor of missile slugging, and what we call parallel recovery. So probably a good way to understand how these protocols uh, relate to each other is this diagram here, where you know checkpoint restart is just the, the base uh, system, and then we extend checkpoint restart with missile slugging, and Parallel rec recovery is an extension of message logging. So let me tell you that uh, the checkpoint restart protocol that we have is a particular uh, a version. Um, checkpoint restart is, is, is based on the assumption that uh, the state of the system can be saved periodically. And uh, <coughs> this uh, global checkpoint is coordinated, um, but the checkpoint is stored locally in, let's say, the, the, the disks of the nodes, the SSDs, or the memory. Uh, however, a failure on one of the nodes requires a global rollback. So the, the whole system has to uh, go back to the previous, uh, uh, to the most recent checkpoint and restart from there. Now, message logging extends, in our case, uh, checkpoint restart by storing the messages and also some information about those messages, in particular uh, non-deterministic uh, uh, events and those are called uh, determinants. And we use a particular protocol of message logging that's called the causal uh, message logging. And basically, it replicates this information in the causal path of, of the messages. Um, the advantage of message logging is that a failure only requires uh, a local rollback. So if there's a crash on one node, uh, only that node requires to roll back. The rest of the system uh, will only send the messages to the recovering node, and we'll wait for, for that, that node to, to catch up. 
Uh, now, parallel recovery is an extension of message logging where we only require the tasks uh, to be migratable. And what happens is that in case of a failure, the recovery uh, uh, is performed in, in parallel. I'll, I'll explain with a figure in the next slide uh, a little bit more about uh, parallel recovery. Now, just, just a, a, a comment here. Um, there are many variants of checkpoint restart, many variants of message logging. So this is by any means uh, an exhaustive evaluation of all the protocols. We, we just uh, chose three protocols uh, that we had implemented in CHARM and evaluated the, the energy consumption of them. So uh, uh, one important thing is that you know, all these protocols are based on checkpoint restart. So a natural question is you know, how often should, should, a, uh, should a system checkpoint? Um, here I have a, a diagram with this uh, 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 variable here, which we, uh, I will call tau. And basically, that's the checkpoint period. So the program executes for tau time units. Then it checkpoints. Um, it's hard to see, but uh, there's a delta here. Delta is the uh, checkpoint latency. And that's, that's the way the, the execution proceeds. You compute for tau units checkpoint, compute for tau units checkpoint, and so on. In case of a failure, uh, depicted here uh, at the bottom, um, the, the system will require our time units to roll back, and uh, it will roll back to the previous checkpoint, and then compute for, for tau uh, units again. So uh, there's a uh, very popular uh, and widely used model to compute uh, this, uh, uh, the optimum uh, tau, and is by uh, uh, John Daly. And uh, this is one approximation that uh, he uh, gives in, 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 in his paper, uh, which relates tau, the optimum uh, uh, checkpoint period, with delta, the checkpoint latency, m, the main, mean time between failures, r, the restart time. So basically, uh, the, the, the formula relates uh, tau with the square root of, of m. This is, what we, this is what we will care about. So given this, uh, there are some natural questions uh, for, for our, our, our case, which is, well, DALI only computed this for checkpoint restart, but what happens with missile logging and parallel recovery? What would be the optimum tau? And um, this is a formula that minimizes execution time. Now, what if we want to minimize energy, the total energy consumed. And what would be the, uh, the, <coughs> the uh, I'm sorry, the trade-off between, uh, you know, execution time and energy consumption using, using this model? So uh, we have the three protocols implemented in CHARM. Uh, I don't think I need, re I need to review uh, what CHARM++ is, but uh, basically um, we, we just leverage the whole infrastructure in CHARM, the migratable objects. And um, the fact that we can do something similar to application level checkpoint that we call system, uh, runtime system based checkpoint, where the, the, uh, uh, the programmer only needs to write some, uh, a few fu functions to uh, determine what state will be saved as part of the checkpoint. Now, um, here we, uh, we will say that uh, uh, one process is a logical node. So so we will just kill a process uh, to simulate a, a failure or to inject a failure in the system. Uh, failure detection uh, is followed by an automatic uh, restart. And we find a, a replacement for the node and, and continue execution. All these uh, fault tolerance protocols that I described previously uh, are implemented at the object level. So basically, we stored the messages between uh, the, the, the objects and so on. So this is just a, a, a diagram about parallel recovery. So imagine you, your system has four nodes. And node B, for instance, has four uh, objects. So as you receive messages for those objects, you execute the entry methods, uh, the corresponding entry methods, until there's a failure. So once there's a failure, node B prime will substitute the uh, node B, will be the replacement. So node B prime receives the uh, checkpoint coming from uh, somewhere else. Uh, uh, another node in the system will have it. And the, the, the parallel part of recovery consists in 
distributing the objects of node B to other nodes, and they will be recovered in parallel. Remember that parallel recovery is based on message logging. Message logging only requires a local rollback. So here we assume that the rest of the system is idle, uh, waiting for node B to, to reach the, uh, the, the, the consistent state again. So eventually, all those nodes, all those, uh, I'm sorry, objects that were uh, distributed return to the uh, original node uh, in the next checkpoint uh, uh, call. All right, so um, we uh, decided to evaluate these three different uh, uh, protocols. So we used the energy cluster that uh, Osman uh, told you about this, this morning. Um, just a quick uh, uh, um, look at the, the features of this node, of this uh, cluster. Uh, it has uh, 40 uh, single socket nodes. Each node is a, a, an Intel Xeon with uh, four cores and four gigabytes of memory. There is a, a, an Ethernet, uh, a gigabit Ethernet uh, uh, network linking all the, all the nodes. There's one single uh, router. Um, there is a PDU that measures every second the uh, power per each node, but we will only get the power consumed by the whole, the whole node, including uh, disk, uh, memory, CPU, caches, and, and so on. And we, the, the frequency is one, one second, I repeat. All right, so what we did was to, uh, we started with checkpoint restart, and we tried our seven uh, point stencil um, with some parameters and run, run it for 200 uh, uh, iterations. Um, so this is uh, just a diagram showing the power uh, consumed by the, by the whole system. And uh, I'm sorry, by one node in the system. Um, there are no crashes. This is just a, a simple execution. Uh, this is the time in seconds. And what you have, what you can see here is the power consumed when the when the system is uh, the node is idle, when it is executing the code, and when it is checkpointing. So as you can see, after some iterations, when it goes to checkpoint, the power reduces almost to the idle level, and goes up again for the rest of the execution. And the same pattern repeats uh, over and over. Okay. So um, one observation from here uh, is the. Uh, uh, very fundamental, but uh, very useful. Um, the um, checkpointing is actually uh, way cheaper than execution. So that means that if we wanted to uh, uh, minimize the energy, it's probably a good idea to checkpoint more often because uh, we, can, we can save a lot of energy by uh, reducing the amount of work that needs to be redone in case of a failure. So that's one observation that we will use in the system, uh, sorry, in the performance model uh, later on. Okay, so um, now we compare the three uh, protocols using the same um, um, st uh, same point in the stencil. Um, and uh, here where you can see uh, uh, the, the, the top row shows um, the progress, uh, what, we show, what we call the progress uh, diagram. So um, <clears throat> again, there are 200 iterations. So this is the progress. Uh, running horizontally, uh, uh, you have the time. And uh, we injected a failure uh, at some point in the execution. It's the same, the same time for, for each, uh, each protocol. And what happens is that at checkpoint restart here, uh, as time you know uh, uh, goes on, it it, uh, it, it executes some some uh, iterations, so makes some progress, and then it will checkpoint right here, and then keeps uh, making progress until there is a failure that roll, rolls back the whole system back to the previous checkpoint, and then you know progress is uh, uh, the the system make, makes uh, more progress, hits another checkpoint call, and finishes the execution. The second row shows the power in one node that is, that is not affected by the failure. So as you can see, the power reduces a little bit during checkpoint uh, and more drastically when there's a, a crash, but pretty much remains uh, at the same level throughout the, the whole execution. Uh, the bottom row shows the total um, uh, power for the system. So it's 
you know, energy is, is power times uh, the uh, elapsed time, so the, the area below the curve is just the, the energy. So mass of slugging, the difference, uh, as I said uh, before, is that the, it only requires a local rollback. So what happens is that during recovery, there's only one node uh, re-executing the, 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 the work that was lost. So basically, the, the whole power of the system goes back to almost the idle power because here we have 40 nodes in the whole system, but only one is recovering after a crash. Um, parallel recovery enhances this uh, 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 approach by uh, accelerating the recovery. So not only is the, the, the power uh, much lower, uh, compared to checkpoint restart during recovery, but recovery is, is shorter because all the, ta all the uh, tasks on that particular node are, are recovered in, in, in parallel. So uh, uh, with that uh, implementation, we also measured uh, a couple of uh, MPI programs, and this is, this is how much energy is consumed during restart uh, uh, using the three different protocols. So. Uh, it's the relative energy consumption to checkpoint restart. And this is meso slugging. This is parallel recovery. So as you can see, there's a 30% uh, percent reduction or more by using uh, meso slugging and parallel, parallel recovery. Um, OK, so just a summary of this uh, short uh, 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 experimental section. Um, here are some pa parameters of the uh, execution. The one thing I want you to, to uh, Look at here is the max power in using checkpoint restart and the max power using meso slugging. So the values are pretty much the same. So meso slugging does not really increase the power draw during execution. It may extend the, the total execution time. That's that's uh, for sure. Uh, and you can see that overhead right here. So one percent for for this extensive program. Three point five and. Uh, sorry, 3.6 and 4.1% uh, for other benchmarks. So this is the overhead, the total overhead in, in, uh, in execution time. Okay, so the next step uh, we thought was to project these uh, results to exascale, was to come up with a performance uh, model for both the time and the energy. So we came up with a bunch of parameters that we wanted to include in our uh, model. Um, I'm not gonna describe each uh, of those parameters, but uh, I just want to point out that uh, we have considered things like uh, the available parallelism during recovery. So we used uh, one value that we found in, in our experiments, uh, and uh, there's also the max power per socket. Uh, these values obviously change from architecture to architecture, but what's more fundamental is the ratio between the idle power and the max power. Uh, in this case, was uh, 40 to 200, but uh, we will see that, uh, uh, that, that that ratio actually uh, has some, some impact. Um, and then we came up with uh, some equations. So total time is, um, uh, Osman also showed this, this, this equation, is the, uh, is the time to solve the problem plus the checkpoint overhead, the time to recover the, the, the work that is lost in failures and the restart time. So we just, uh, found a proper uh, um, formulas for each of these components. And here I'm showing the formulas for execution time uh, for, for checkpoint restart in uh, parallel, parallel recovery. I, I won't go into details, but just notice that, uh, please note that the, uh, the time to solve in, in checkpoint restart is W, and we have to multiply W times mu, and mu is the, uh, the overhead associated to checkpoint restart, uh, to uh, meso slogging. This mu is the parameter right here. So we assume there's a 5% penalization in, over in, the, uh, uh, in using uh, meso slogging. So we did the same uh, uh, with the, the energy. It's, the, it's a similar uh, uh, equation. And uh, uh, so uh, what, what I, one of the things I can say here is that uh, for checkpoint restart, during these W time units, the whole system, so S is the number of, of, of nodes, execute at this power, but this second uh, a term here, which is the checkpoint time, during all the checkpoint time, the system executes at 
L power, which is the almost the the the, the idle power, is the power at, at which uh, the system uh, 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 runs with, uh, when checkpointing. And well, the rest of the uh, components uh, also have a, 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 um, a reasonable, uh, we think, uh, explanation. So um, of course, parallel recovery is much more complex because it needs to account for the, the parallelism and during recovery and some additional penalizations that are uh, uh, that a parallel recovery has. Now, one of the things I want to mention here is that uh, um, parallel, uh, the energy depends on T here and also on tau. So there are two possibilities for minimizing the energy. One is to use, uh, I mean, one is to find the optimum uh, tau for, for to minimize energy, and the other use the tau that minimizes time. So we'll have this. Uh, uh, Dichotomy when we when we see the results, and uh, here are, uh, here's some some um, results of the relative execution time. So it's relative to checkpoint restart, which we think is is the baseline. So this is the relative execution time for um, um, running a, a, a job uh, consisting of 24 hours, I think, and this is the number of sockets uh, going from 16k to one. To one million, and as you can see, well, uh, Mesos logging starts wor being worse than checkpoint restart, but there is a crossover around 200,000 sockets, uh, and power recovery is you know much better all through this spectrum uh, to the point that uh, around one million sockets it may be able to execute at uh, you know twice as fast. Now, this, this, in this scenario, uh, the more sockets that we have, the higher the failure frequency. Because uh, the, the relationship between failure frequency and, 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 and system size is, is linear. So uh, uh, basically, in a, in a scenario where failures are frequent, parallel recovery can do, can do a, a, a much better job than checkpoint restart. Uh, what, what about energy? Um, here, here are the two plots. One using the tau that optimizes time, but we measured energy. And this is the relative energy consumption relative to uh, uh, checkpoint restart again. Um, so the figures are pretty similar to the time plot, except that uh, now message logging throughout the whole range is better than, than checkpoint restart. So the take one takeaway message from these uh, figures is message logging may be slower in execution time, but it's always uh, better in terms of energy consumption. So uh, the energy uh, plot using the, uh, uh, the optimum tau for energy looks very similar. And here we also uh, show the curve uh, using the checkpoint restart with uh, the tau that optimizes time. So as you can see, we can decrease a little bit the energy consumption using a, 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 a tau that optimizes energy. OK, so w yes. That's actually a question. So uh, the more you are here, the more things you will actually. So uh, you know, and, uh, you just assume sort of a proportional number of failures to the number of sockets that you have. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and we have Twitter where always a uh, useful word for us on the other things that are not working for and so on. So that's how we can do the initial number of failures. Okay, um, well, this is the check down period. Um, I'm actually going to skip uh, this, this slide. Um, I can discuss it offline, but I think I'm running uh, out of time here. So um, um, a couple of discussion points. So um, uh, I talked about the ratio between idle power or uh, in, in, uh, max power. So this is the architecture that we use. The ra that ratio between base and max power is uh, 0.48, but uh, recent uh, uh, processors actually have a much uh, uh, a smaller ratio. And that means that uh, checkpointing, remember the checkpoint uh, runs at almost this, this power. So uh, uh, the checkpoint will become uh, uh, more cheaper in terms of energy. And probably that will increase the checkpoint frequency. 
but also migratability in over decomposition allows us to have more uh, work units per node, which can be distributed among more nodes in case of a, of a failure, which will accelerate, again, uh, recovery. So decomposition was uh, fundamental for, for uh, all the savings in energy and, and execution time. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, well, uh, one of the things that we notice is that, uh, uh, you know, some people uh, think that minimize execution time will immediately uh, uh, imply the, uh, a minimization in energy. In the context of, you know, uh, uh, an execution with a, a faulty system, this is, this is definitely not true. So remember the case of mesoslogging. Mesoslogging is takes more time, but actually uh, uh, consumes uh, uh, less energy. And at any rate, you can also infrequent the checkpoint frequency because checkpoint is uh, much cheaper in terms of, of energy. So you can uh, afford checkpointing more frequently extending the total execution time, but reducing the, the work that you need to, to recover. Um, okay, um, there's uh, some energy overhead of, 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 me of using mesoslogging in general, but this doesn't come from a, an increasing power draw, it's just that a, there's a, 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 a performance penalization and that increases, uh, uh, that may increase the, the, the energy consumption. Of course, compared to checkpoint restart, mesoslogging and parallel recovery do a, a, a better job. Uh, power recovery is based on the idea uh, of, of, of mesoslogging. So uh, uh, it actually, we showed that it provides uh, a minimum, it reduces the execu execution time. So the, the programmers and, and the uh, scientists will be happy, but it also reduces energy consumption. So the managers of the, uh, these systems will be, will be happy too. So we think it, it's a really promising uh, uh, technique to actually uh, reduce both time and energy. So our model predicts more than 50% reduction in both for uh, uh, extreme scale. And uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. I, I just wanted to, to mention uh, a couple of uh, things for the acknowledgments. Uh, uh, the, the HPC Colony 2 project that has uh, funded this research partially. And Professor uh, Tarek from this department who uh, uh, generously allowed us to, to run these this experiments on his uh, uh, testbed. All right, oh, thank you, thank you so much.